meeting as well as, a, as an honorary member for, uh, for this meeting. Um, I'm going to continue item number one. So there will be only uh, items two and three and uh, public comment. So anyone that speaks uh, should have two minutes plus one minute of public comment, but only if they speak on each item. So I'm going to ask for one minute on item two and one minute on item three maximum separately. So for those of you that are calling about rodeos, um, I want to try to hear as many people as possible. So please limit yourself to item number three. And if you choose additional public comment, um, if you include item number two, we're actually going to expect you to speak on item number two, which uh, relates to a military leave. And I don't think most people will have an interest in speaking on both. So um, that's how we are going to organize it. And so uh, if we could begin with public comment. Uh, Mr. Chair, would you like the uh, committee clerk to read the public comment instructions? Yes, please do. All right. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-602-6414 and then press the pound key. Press the pound key again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. And now, um, anybody wishing to speak, please, please press star 9 again. Caller with the last four numbers, 8377. Please state your name. The, the state you're calling from and the item you'd like to speak on. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Patty Shanker and I am speaking on item three. I am not a racist. Rodeo advocates accuse those of us who oppose the cruel events of being racist, but that just isn't true. When you have no defense, you go to name calling. We are simply against animal abuse and violence and entertainment no matter who is participating. Even Mexico City has recently banned bullfighting indefinitely, not as a cultural attack, but because of the inherent cruelty. The animals used, abused, and killed at these events are not alone. Humans, including children, are also hurt and killed. I'm against that too. It is a scientific, scientific fact that watching violence encourages real violence. The National Library of Medicine writes Quote, animal and child welfare experts argue that government sanctioned exposure of children to brutal violence may be a form of psychological violence against youth. Hence, if governments choose to condone, be complicit in, or ignore this violent exposure, despite having knowledge of the dire psychological and social consequences for youth exposed to this cruelty, it may be argued that their actions or inactions constitute a violation of basic human rights. We need to make violence towards animals more worthy of moral concern and the goal of intervention. The intervention should be for LA to pass this ordinance. I thank my council member Blumenfield for it and urge you to proceed. Thank you very much. Thank you, caller. The caller with the last four numbers one, uh, I'm sorry, 3672, please state your name, the state you're calling from, and the items you'd like to speak on. Can we repeat those last four numbers? I think the caller might have missed it. Mr. Hirsch. Caller with the last four numbers, 3672. Please state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hi, everyone. I am commenting on item three. 
My name is Lisa Beal, and I am the campaign manager for Last Chance for Animals. We are a nonprofit animal rights organization based in Los Angeles and founded in 1985. On behalf of LCA and its members, we fully support the rodeo device ban and respectfully ask the community to vote in favor of it today. The rodeo device ban is for the animals. The ban is not about culture or tradition. It is to stop animals from being abused and used by the rodeo industry. The ban is solely for the animal. Rodeos harm animals, that is a fact. I encourage everyone to read the Los Angeles Times article that came out today called Broken Animals. It spells out the injuries of rodeo animals over the last 21 years in California and the blatant lies, lies of the rodeo industry. I also encourage everyone to look at the recent poll that came out on the rodeo device ban. The poll showed that 72% of Los Angeles voting residents approve of the ban. Animal abuse has no place in Los Angeles and our laws must change to reflect the will of the people. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to the committee voting and approval of the rodeo device ban today. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 0927. Please state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Caller with the last four numbers, 3779. Please state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Caller with the last four numbers, 3779. Please press star six to unmute yourself. And state your name, the state you're calling from, and the item you'd like to speak on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you so much for having this meeting. My name is Annie Abram, and I am uh, with Los Angeles for Animals. Um, we have seen the suffering of the animals, and we can relate to what is happening um, emotional-wise with our beloved pet family members that we love so much, so dearly. This ban needs to happen. The torture tools that are used on these innocent beings is a horrendous barbaric practice that needs to be outdated and for us to look down at and say, how did we even practice this? Please ban rodeo tools that are torturing animals. It is a cruel practice altogether. We know animals feel pain, suffer, hurt, love, and want to live safe and free just like you and me. And it is our obligation to protect the most vulnerable as children, as animals, as elderly, as others who have been victimized, whether it's the color, race, or gender. We need to speak out for all and we need to put laws to protect them. I urge you and plead with you, please ban these tools of torture and torment, and please consider ending all animal cruelty. Thank you so much. May you have a blessed day. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, and I would note that uh, Councilmember Marquis Harris Dawson has joined us for this meeting. Hello with the last four numbers, 3123. Three. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Let us know your name, the state you're calling from, and the item you'd like to speak on. Good, af Good afternoon. This is Dr. David Ramey. I'm president of the Los Angeles Equine Advisory Council, a uh, organization formed by the city council to advise on equestrian matters and also a practicing veterinarian in the area for since 1984. Um, we've submitted documents pertaining to this, and our concern, we certainly think that animal use should be safe, and I know everyone in rodeo supports that. My concern is that the ordinance has written it, number one, would not stop the, the injury to animals um, and uh, that are seen in rodeo. 
And number two would have a lot of potential fallover in the other areas of uh, use. Um, for instance, in the movie industry, in the industry, uh, in the uh, Olympics coming up, spurs are used. And those are specifically described as implements of torture. I think that the intent of this ordinance, while good, it, it's also uh, poorly written and ill-conceived, and uh, the LAEAC has submitted a document for your perusal uh, to suggest some modifications that would both lead to animal safety uh, as well as not having flops over in the other areas. Um, I would note that a couple of people commented about banning rodeo, and that is not apparently the intent of this ordinance. If it is, it would be a simple matter for you to write an ordinance banning rodeo. And if that's your intent, you could do that and not have this other slop over. I would not be in support of that, and we would not be in support of that. But our concern is that, as written, this is just not a, a well-written ordinance. And those of us that have expertise that you uh, appointed specifically for this purpose would be more than happy to consult with you in drafting uh, a more appropriate more narrow and uh, more helpful ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 9809. Please state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hello, my name is Dr. Holly Wilson, calling from the state of California, and this is my public comment. When you enter the rodeo arena, there are commonly signs posted that read, no photography. What exactly? Shit. Hmm. Caller, are you there? Sounds like we inadvertently clicked her off. Okay. Caller with the last four numbers, 5151. Please. Press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Matt Rozell. I am calling about item three. I am the campaign manager for the Animal Legal Defense Fund, and I'm in Los Angeles. Tragic incidents like the bull who broke his leg recently at a PBR event and was dragged out of the arena are exactly the type of public displays of animal cruelty this ordinance will prevent. Injuries to animals like this are drastically and chronically underreported. We sued the California Rodeo Salinas for their illegal practice of hiding injuries to animals. And of the 41 documented injuries, only four of them were reported to the State Veterinary Medical Board as required by California law. A veterinary expert confirmed these injuries warranted immediate medical attention, yet most were not even reported. Thank you and the entire council for making Los Angeles world-renowned for animal protection laws that have set a high standard for other jurisdictions to follow. We strongly urge your support of this important measure and thank you for your work on it. Thank you, caller. Caller with the last four numbers, 9809. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Caller with the last four numbers, 9809. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Call them with the last four numbers, 9809. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hello? It's yes. my turn. Can you hear me? Yes. Go, go ahead, sir. Okay. So watch any oh, yeah. standard rodeo video. This is my public comments. I'm in Los Angeles. And you will see terrified animals being chased, roped, wrestled, wrangled, hogtied, their bodies slammed to the ground. Rodeos are no better than the circus. Circuses take wild animals and make them tame. Rodeos take tame animals and make them wild. 
both accomplish these feats with instruments to make animals behave in manners which are unnatural or exaggerated, placing them at risk for injury and death. I have personally confirmed with the USDA that they receive injured rodeo animals called rodeo discards. These animals suffer a litany of injuries seen on necropsy. Two former USDA meat inspectors have given testament to the condition of rodeo discards. Ruptured organs, torn ligaments, broken bones, punctured lungs, snapped necks. We want to make it abundantly clear this is not an attack on culture. This ordinance is taking a long overdue stand against animal cruelty. And as a resident of Los Angeles, I want to say an extra thank you to this committee and to all the council members for having the courage to take on the rodeo. My name is Heather Wilson and I am a resident of Los Angeles. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for your testimony. Caller with the last four numbers, 3785. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Let us know your name and the item you'd like to speak on. My name is Scott Dorenkamp, and I am uh, the Livestock Program Manager with the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association in Colorado. Um, you have heard lots of uh, misconceptions and flat lies You've, bet, you've had uh, dozens of veterinarians have let you and the council know about our 99.9% .9 safety rating at rodeos. Don't let politics get in the way of the truth. Please adopt the Western Sports Industry Coalition's amendments to the rodeo ordinance. In California last year, there were 13,311 livestock exposures to competition with only 18 injuries, PRCA sanctioned events. As you can see, that is not often or common as you've been led to believe. Again, I urge you to uh, adopt the Western Sports Industry Coalition's amendments to the Rovio Ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Caller with the last four numbers, 6281. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Let us know your name and your, the items you'd like to speak on. Caller with the last four numbers, 6281. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Let us know your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is Pamela Brodsky and I'm a resident of the Crestview neighborhood of Los Angeles. I am calling. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Um, question. I missed the beginning. Are you doing public comment or only agenda items? Oh, public comment. No, not you. The commission. They I called my have... number. I don't know. Why. <laughs> You're fun. I think we have two people on the line. Why don't we let them know which one's speaking first? Call in with the last four numbers, 2286. Please speak first. Okay. Well, this is Pamela Brodsky. I'm a resident of the Crestview neighborhood of Los Angeles, and I'm calling regarding item number three. I am the founder of Reading to the Rescue, which supports animal welfare and children's literacy in Los Angeles. I'm also a foster and volunteer for Los Angeles Animal Services and I'm calling to urge the council to support this animal protection measure. This type of cruelty has no place in our city. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Caller with the last four numbers, 6281. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Okay, are you just doing public comment or are you just speaking on the item? On the item and public comment. Okay, um, this is public comment. My name is Gail Rath, and just public comment. And this is to the PAW Commission. I want to wish you a farewell. This morning I was at North Central uh, from 6.45 until uh, almost 9 a.m. and watched a lady with a cat and a carrier ringing at the doorbell 
and no one answered. I thought she was an employee because she was nicely dressed. I was in my car waiting for another event to happen. I finally went up to her, and she told me they wouldn't answer the phone. Her cat was dying. I pressed the buzzer, and again, no one answered the phone. I am with the rescue group. I contacted the rescue group. We got a hold of a veterinarian where that cat was humanely put down. This cat, this lady took the bus to your shelter at North Central and was going to go home by bus and come back later because no one answered the phone. Thank you, ma'am. She's a tax paper. This is my public comment. Goodbye. I hope we get a better commission. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 1414. Please state your name or please press star six. State your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yes, hello. My name is Tim Baldwin, and I'd like to express my opposition to the agenda item number three and specifically the proposed ordinance that will ban rodeo in the city of Los Angeles. I'm a rodeo and bull riding fan, and I attended the professional bull riders event in Los Angeles this past year. Anyone who's a fan of rodeo knows that the health and safety of animals utilized in rodeo and bull riding is very important to everyone involved. If this ordinance goes forward as written, it will effectively ban in Los Angeles rodeo, bull riding, team roping, chariotas, and other equestrian events. The Western Sports Industry Coalition and the Los Angeles Equine Advisory Committee have both provided this committee with language that would clarify and improve the ordinance. I urge you not to move forward with this ordinance as written today, and instead ask the members of this committee to take the time to amend the ordinance and incorporate the changes suggested by the Western Sports Industry Coalition and LA Equine Advisory Council. And thank you for taking the time to listen to my concerns. Thank you, sir. Caller with the last four numbers, 1277. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Let us know your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hi, this is Murray Bankhead. I'm calling on item number three, and I'm calling from California. I, too, am calling to strongly urge uh, the committee not to approve the ordinance that is currently before the committee. It's poorly written, and it's vague and frankly is being put forward by people with little or no knowledge of large animal care or treatment. And that, for that reason, I request that you reject it in its entirety. However, there is an alternative that has been presented to you by the equine industry based on facts and industry experts to accomplish overall the purpose for which it was set and ensure that animal safety continues at the rodeo, both before, during, and after performances. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Caller with the last four numbers, 9343. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, uh, my name is um, Tia Williams, and I'm calling regarding item three. Um, I'm from California, a Los Angeles resident. And I do support the council file 20-1575 that would uh, ban those devices uh, as the electric prods, the plank straps, and the sharpened spurs. I mean, those do cause pain. Um, th those devices must be banned. Uh, overall, rodeos really are not a tradition. Uh, I mean, no tradition should ever involve animal cruelty. It's a, it's bar, it is barbaric, it's not entertainment. Horses, bulls, steers, and calves, they suffer internal damage and broken bones and, you know, and then suffer agonizing death. So, I mean, I, uh, I, I hope that you will uh, ban these devices. Uh, really, uh, overall, I'd like to see rodeos being banned eventually because uh these uh these animals are suffering i mean this is not entertainment this is uh barbaric uh torture in my opinion thank you thank you ma'am call with the last four numbers zero zero nine zero please press star six to unmute yourself state your name and the item you'd like to speak on and the state you're calling from 
Hi, my name is Mike Kabliska. I am an investigator for showing animals respect and kindness. I've investigated rodeos all across the U.S., including many in California, and I support the device ban. Any rational person looking at rodeo can clearly see that it is abuse. Inhumane tools like electrical prods used on animals for entertainment does not honor ranch history. There's no similarity to the way wild horses were once trained versus the way domestic rodeo horses are forced to buck over and over. The timed event roping of calves and steers and rodeo is not the way things are or ever were done on a ranch. This mindless excuse for entertainment cannot be defended and should not be tolerated. You have the opportunity to make it stop. Please do the right thing and ban these tools. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Call with the last four numbers, 1910. Please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, the state you're calling from, and the item you'd like to speak on. My name is Stephanie Austin. Um, I am calling from Body in Balance, a uh, vegan cruelty-free clinic in uh, Los Angeles. And we support uh, Council File 20-1575. Use of these devices is cruel and inhumane. Bulls and horses are sentient beings. If you would not use these devices on your beloved dogs, cats, or other pets, please consider. Ma'am, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. You have 30 more seconds. Oh, okay. Um, I've, I've concluded. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Caller with the last four numbers. 7588. Please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, state you're calling from, and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Dave Duquette. I represent an organization called Western Justice. We are a national organization. Um, one of the things I want to get out there is that uh, animal rights groups like Last Chance for Animals represent a very small portion of society. And the animal rights folks represent about two to 3% of your constituency. And if you pass this ordinance, you will be appeasing a very small minority of your constituents. And the amount of the people who will be harmed by this will be in the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. The, the black and Latino youth that will be lose out on education and that hand, that very needed animal to human interaction will be gone. The, the folks that say they have 72% of Los Angeles, you know, saying that they don't want rodeo, I, they don't have that kind of reach. That group is a very small group. Last Chance for Animals is a very small group, and they may have 72% of the people that they polled in a very small group. So. Rodeo, one thing I w else I want to say is rodeo on a federal level is the only group not uh, regulated by the Horse Protection Act. And Thank the you, reason sir. that is. Thank you, sir. Caller with the last four numbers, 1345. Please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, state you're calling from, and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Alexandra Pervengi. I'm an LA resident in California, and I'm speaking on item three to ban cruel rodeo devices. This is my public comment. I support Council File 20 1575. I was born in Midland, Texas, and grew up around football, rodeos, and farms. I'm well aware of the inhumane practices used on animals for what some deem entertainment. Quick backstory I entered the Air Force Academy in 2005. During basic training, they bust us to a rodeo for what was supposed to be a fun day off. After they sat us down on the bleachers, I immediately got up and walked out. A cadre didn't miss a beat, ordered me to go back inside and watch the rodeo. That was the one and only time I've ever refused a direct order in the 12 years of my Air Force career. I was ready to stand up for what's right, even if that meant I was standing alone. Another cadre came over, told me I didn't have to watch it while my friend was just sat by my side until it was over. I cried the entire time. I hated that the only stance I could take was not watching 
Meanwhile, those animals were still being tortured, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. So here I am trying to do something about it instead of crying, feeling helpless. You know, human or animals should be put through pain for our entertainment. Imagine someone using an electric prod or digging their sharpened spur into your cat Bella or cinching a flank strap so tight around your dog Marley as he jumps in pain, agony, and confusion, struggling, trying to get it off to no avail. Why does it make it any less wrong when it's a cow or horse? Even if it's allegedly just 18 injured animals, it's Thank unethical you, for humans and animals. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Caller with the last four numbers, 0239. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Yes, I'm speaking on agenda item three. My name is Susan Hirsch. I'm a Los Angeles resident in California, and I urge you to please pass this ordinance. Um, the rodeo activities involving the use of farm animals is an unnecessary and ludicrous attempt to show prowess bravado over an innocent feeling animal subjected to senseless violence, trauma, injury, or worse, in many cases, death. Please, Los Angeles is better than this. Let's evolve by passing this ordinance, and thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Caller with the last four numbers, 7604. Please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hi, my name is Eric Deardorff, and I'm calling from California. I want to speak on item three to help end the cruelty in rodeos. Uh, animals shouldn't have to be prodded, whipped, or injured for entertainment. And I support the rodeo device ban to stop animals from being used and abused. If I use these same tools and methods on my dogs, it'll be cruelty to animals. And I urge the council to adopt this measure the way that it's written. Uh, Los Angeles is better than this, and we should be a leader for the country on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Call it with the last four numbers, 0238. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hello, my name is Sam Hirsch, a Los Angeles, California resident. My comment is on agenda item number three, Council File 20-1575. Specifically, the exploitation of animals used in rodeos, including but not limited to bronc and bull riding, steer wrestling, cap roping, etc. These animals are terrorized before being physically abused with spurs, ropes, electric shock prods for human entertainment and profit. These sentient beings endure horrible and senseless cruelty. Furthermore, often these animals are severely injured and then must be killed or euthanized. There is zero need for rodeo type activities in modern civil society that should know better. Many cities have already enacted restrictions on rodeos. Several cities nearby have passed complete rodeo bans. LAMC 53.39.2 would be a strong move towards that goal, and I urge you to pass it now. Disclosure. David Ramey, DBM, and David Duquette are contributors of Protect the Harvest, a publication and philosophy of animal exploitation started by Forrest Lucas. Thank you, Thank you. sir. Follow at the last four number 6622. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the state you're calling from, and the item you'd like to speak on. Follow at the last four number 6622. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Lynn Frudenberg. I'm calling from Los Angeles um, County um, in California uh, on item number three. I'm calling in support of uh, file cons console file number 20-1575, the rodeo device ban. Please ban the use of the vile rodeo devices like electric prods, plank straps, and sharpened spurs that are, that are commonly used in the rodeos. These so-called tools are inhumane, used to purposely inflict pain. Bulls and horses are exploited in rodeos, zapped with electrical prods to make them charge out of a chute. Blank straps and spurs cause animals to buck wildly in an attempt to dislodge the tightly cinched straps. Spurs cause blunt trauma to the shoulder. They do not have time to heal between rodeo circuits. And the bucking straps cause chafing to a delicate flank area. Very painful to have a tight strap on raw skin. These horses are purposely prodded with spurs and tight leather straps to run blind 
in a, in a desperate attempt to flee their abuser. Rodeos are disguised as tradition and culture, but this is clearly nothing more than animal abuse. Thank Children you, who attend the rodeos witness riders and ropers dominate and injure animals. Thank you, ma'am. Call with the last four numbers, 1889. Please state... Uh, Press star six, state your name, I would like to speak on, and your, the state you're calling from. Caller with the last four numbers, 1889. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Caller with the last four numbers, 1889. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Okay. No longer here. Caller with the last four numbers eight, six, eight, seven. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hello, my name is Karen Dawn. I'm calling to speak on item three, re-rodeo, and I'm calling from California. I'm the executive director of Dawn Watch, which represents animal advocates, uh, including approximately 600 in the city of Los Angeles. Um, people who care about animal welfare far from being a tiny minority of Angelinos are in fact the vast majority of uh, Angelinos or certainly of Californians. And one just has to look at the vote on Prop 2 and Prop 12, which dealt with the cruelest farming practices to learn how deeply Californians care about animal welfare. I greatly appreciate the way the measure is written because it doesn't ban a cultural event. It specifically bans devices that are specifically designed to hurt animals I personally love Western culture. My cowboy hat's my favorite piece of attire, but I don't love devices that hurt animals for our entertainment. And I think it's safe to say that goes for the vast majority of Californians. As for spillover into Hollywood, which was mentioned by a previous caller, far from being a problem, that means the bill's doing exactly what it's meant to do, which is not going after a specific cultural aspect, but going after animal cruelty for entertainment. And that is something that most Angelinos would like to see end. Thank you so much for looking into this issue. Thank you. Call with the last four numbers, 7977. Please press star six, unmute yourself, state your name, item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hello, my name is Elvio Sedano, calling from California on item number three. And I'm um, calling to support this ordinance and to ask you all um, to ban um, these weapons because I see them as weapons and they, because they hurt animals. Anything that can hurt you is a weapon. So I just want to be clear on that. These animals are clearly being used and abused and even killed. Um, and these weapons use, they hurt these animals. The bucking shows how uncomfortable these animals are. The videos also show the abuse animals endure. People and animals are killed in these events. Why is this acceptable? There is no excuse for this in our society. And as a Latina, I do not support this. And my family members don't support this. And my friends don't support this. Um, this is not part of my culture. Um, this is animal abuse, and I would never accept it. These animals deserve to live in peace and not be bullied by humans. Thank you, ma'am. You know, what if... Thank you, ma'am. Th thank you. Follow with the last four numbers, 1212. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, your number. State your name, the item you'd like to speak on and the uh, state you're calling from. Caller with the last four numbers, 1212. Please press star six to unmute yourself. I 
again, caller with the last four numbers, one, two, one, two. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Okay, they are gone. Caller with the last four numbers, five, eight, zero, two. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Denzel. I'm calling from California and I'm speaking on agenda item three. I'm pleased to hear that you have now introduced this agenda item to ban the cruel practices and tools of rodeos from the city of LA. It has long been overdue to put an end to these abusive practices and tools used to control bulls solely for human entertainment purposes. Bulls are routinely, routinely prodded, shocked, and whipped, and then suffer debilitating injuries, including broken bones, torn ligaments, or paralysis. Irvine and Pasadena have already banned rodeos entirely due to these facts, and this is a significant first step for the city of LA to follow suit. Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey closed down five years ago due to criticism of their use of circus animals. Now they have returned with a circus without any animals at all. Times have changed and we need to evolve away from using animals for energy at the expense of their suffering. Thank you for also realizing that these cruel forms of entertainment have no place in a modern progressive society. People can always go to sanctuaries to experience animal to human interactions where it will be done with kindness, not cruelty. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, two, I'm sorry, 9241, please state your name or please actually press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the last, uh, the item you'd like to speak on and the state you're calling from. Hello, council members. My name is Rachel Henry. I'm an LA resident in California. I'm speaking on item three and I'm in support of council file 20-1575, the ban of rodeo devices on animals. I realize how important it is for people to want to continue tradition. But if we cannot recognize when a paradigm shift is necessary and what, when what has always been considered as a favorite pastime has actually been at the expense of living beings, who experience true fear, pain, and abuse, sorry, then we are failing to protect those who cannot help themselves and evolve to compassionate people. To prioritize tradition, sport, or profit over the welfare of living beings reflects a society that endorses cursory pleasures and entertainment over a higher responsibility to ensure the safety and well-being of all living and sentient beings. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Caller with the last four numbers, 8697. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the state you're calling from, and the item you'd like to speak on. Go ahead. This is, okay, thank you. This is Drew Dane, and I'm calling on uh, from California regarding council file 20-1575. I know you've heard this already, but I'm going to repeat it again. Bulls and horses exploited in rodeos and charreadas are often zapped with electric prods to make them charge out of the chute. Flank straps and spurs may be used too, sometimes with spurs and other irritating materials placed underneath causing the animals to buck wildly in a desperate attempt to dislodge the tightly cinched Straps. These uh, instruments were purposely designed to cause pain. So it's clear that as practiced, these rodeos were never intended to behave, practice benign behavior towards the animals, but as another caller said, to exercise a professed and pathetic prowess over a defenseless animal. I strongly support the ban on cool rodeo devices. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Caller with the last four numbers, 8756. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the state you're calling from, and the item you'd like to speak on. Um, yes, hi, my name is Allie. I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. Thank you. I'm speaking on item number three in support of 201575, the ban on these items. 
um, the items of cruelty for the rodeo, and I just wanted to thank you for hearing me today. Um, I cover a broad spectrum from an entertainment producer and studio owner to a nonprofit arts administrator, and just want to say that I do not believe that animals consent in any way to be brutalized or traumatized in any form of violence or, you know, should not be condoned for entertainment and um, have worked with the nonprofit uh, HERO, a horse equine rescue organization where a lot of uh, rodeo animals have been brought in um, and uh, we would work rehabilitating these animals um, over years um, as best as we could and it was terrifying to see the conditions that they were subjected to so I would really speak in support of banning these devices and thank you for your time and just uh, know that some of us uh, for me in, in specific um, I'm a producer I work in entertainment thank you, I understand the appreciate, your, so, thank you. appreciate your comments and uh, we're at the time that we had allocated for uh, speakers uh, in public comment, but I know there are a lot of people on the queue. So I'm going to take 10 more callers, and then we are going to uh, uh, begin addressing the items. Call though at the last four numbers, 8916. Please press star 6 to unmute yourself. State your name, item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Yes, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, my name is Michael Fujimori, and I'm a lifelong resident, a native of Los Angeles, and I'm calling on item three. Today I'm asking you, can you please pass Council File 20-1575? Electric prods, sharpened spurs, and plank straps are instruments of cruelty and torture and have no place in a civilized society. Uh, in fact, rodeoism himself should be banned outright as spectacles of violence, and animal abuse disguised as entertainment. Los Angeles has a long track record of ensuring that all citizens, including animals, are protected from harm, and that's why I've always been a proud Angelina. So please pass 20-1575. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Follow with the last four numbers, 1449. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Okay, caller with the last four numbers, 2234. Please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Kim Jett with Animal Defenders International, based in Los Angeles, and on behalf of our supporters in LA, in strong support of item three. ADI's ongoing studies highlight the abuse, deprivation, and suffering of animals used in entertainment. Their mental and physical health are inev inevitably compromised. Rodeos cause animals to suffer from injury, pain, stress, and fear. Bulls and horses are tormented in the chutes prior to release into the ring. Riders dig spurs into the animal's flesh, the flank strap, the strap around the sensitive lower abdomen area, makes them buck when it is pulled tight as the horse or bull leaves the chute. Bulls used in rodeos are prodded, whipped, and electric shocked and routinely suffer debilitating injuries, including torn ligaments, broken bones, skin abrasions, concussions, internal bleeding, and paralysis. Some di disciplines can even result in broken necks and spines or even death. There's nothing enjoyable about watching an animal suffer fear, pain, and distress. This is not entertainment. Thank you to the committee for your ongoing efforts to protect animals in Los Angeles. We urge your support for Council File 20 Thank you, ma'am. Call with the last four numbers, 2710. Please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Uh, check, check. Do you hear me? Yep. Yeah, my name is Curtis. I'm calling from uh, Berkeley, California, uh, and I am in support of the rodeo ordinance. Uh, I'd like to say that the veterinarians on here remind me a lot of the scientists from the film Don't Look Up that were being paid by the uh, tech companies that wanted to mine the comet instead of blowing it up. Uh, I think that's relevant because none of the animal rights advocates on here, including myself, have anything financial to gain while the opposition along with the industry does. Uh, regarding the 2 to 3% constituents, they don't, they're, they're the only people that agree with this. This is an appeal to majority fallacy. 
um, along with this being not true, uh, almost every social justice issue is brought to this into the center of consciousness by a small minority. Um, and this is a social justice issue. Speciesism is a social justice issue. Um, tradition and culture is simply a, an appeal to, to tradition fallacy. Um, and this, one of the callers also talked about the people that will be harmed by this, but did not talk about the animals that are being harmed. I mean, if anyone needs uh, to experience this human and animal interaction, Thank you, sir. please visit an animal sanctuary. They need funding and volunteers. Thank you so much. Call with the last four numbers, 8234. Please, stay, uh, please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, I didn't like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. My name is Amanda, and I am calling from Los Angeles, California. Um, as somebody who grew up with my grandpa going to rodeos my whole childhood, um, I can personally attest to the fact that rodeos are extremely cruel and violent towards the animals who are forced to perform in them. Rodeos use tools such as the spurs and flank straps, electric prods, which a lot of people don't realize are legal to use on these animals. Um, provoke normally docile animals into seemingly wild behaviors. And as I advocate for these animals um, during rodeo events all across Southern California, um, I like to tell people because oftentimes you can see the animals in their pens before the rodeo begins. And I ask people to look at those animals and ask themselves what happens between the time that they're gentle, docile, you know, roaming around in their pens to the time that they're inside that loud arena and bucking seemingly wild as if they're untamed beasts. And these animals are not. They're docile, gentle farm animals. Um, and when it comes to the spurs, you know, yes, horses are yes, in yes. wild prey animals, and the spurs are just playing on that fear of them. Thank you, ma'am. Caller with the last four numbers, 3007. Please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hi, my name is Jaime Mora from California here to comment on item three. Go ahead. I'm here on behalf, I'm here on behalf of PETA Latino and PETA's thousands of members in Los Angeles County in support of Council File 20-1575, which would ban electric prods, flank straps, and sharpened spurs from rodeos in Tapriata. These devices are purposely designed to cause pain. Opposition to this proposal is illegitimate since the ban would not stop rodeos, but simply stop the deliberate infliction of pain on the animals forced to participate. The small minority of uh, rodeo and charreada enthusiasts should not take precedence over the overwhelming number of people, including many Latinos like myself, who condemn cruelty. A ban would bring immediate and long-lasting relief for animals. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Caller with the last four numbers, 1157. Please press star six, unmute yourself. State your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Holly. I'm calling you from California. I'm calling in on item number three. When you enter the rodeo arena, there are commonly signs posted that read, no photography. What exactly are you trying to hide? I'm going to tell the horrifying tale of Red Alert. He broke a front leg out of the gate in Knoxville, Tennessee on February 19th of this year. This was a bull. His tormentor rode him for a full eight seconds before dismounting. His neck was then roped and this 2000 pound animal was yanked and forced to walk on his remaining three intact limbs. He was stoic. He initially refused to move, but soon realized that this was not an option. The crowd cheered when they saw him stumble. Is this what we want to expose our children to? We are teaching them depraved indifference to suffering. These animals die with their skull fractures, internal hemorrhaging, ruptured organs, broken necks, and fractured limbs. Thank you, ma'am. How many red... Appreciate your statement. Call out the last four numbers, 4700. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. 
Hello, my name is Allison Levina Phelan. I'm an LA resident and I support Council Files 20, 50, and 75. From a very young age, when I didn't realize what was really going on with rodeos, I knew that there was something wrong. I saw it as being very cruel and humane and um, barbaric. I'm just so pleased to hear that um, the council is standing up to end rodeos in California. I'm also very proud of all the Californians that have called in and and shared their heart and their truth. I'm a member of PETA and a huge advocate for animals. And like so many people have said, if you want to have interaction with animals, then go to a sanctuary. They're not ours to abuse, to use, and torture. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Paula, with the last four numbers, 0957, please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hi, my name is Daniela Castillo, and I am a licensed doctor of veterinary medicine and resident in Los Angeles, California. I'm calling for item three to support ordinance 20-1575. I graduated from Universidad Veracruzana in Mexico, so I'm very familiar with the cruelty that goes in rodeo towards animals. I support any protection to rodeo animals. This is 2022 and there is enough technology for entertainment, such as virtual reality and other devices. This is exactly what we call speciesism, which is comparable to racism and sexism. It's basically a group of individuals who believe are superior, abusing members of other groups that they believe are inferior. As a woman, Latina, I can tell you people like us are not the minority, but people abusing these animals have a lot of power. Please, this is not the example we want to give to our children for the treatment towards innocent beings. Los Angeles is one of the most progressive cities in the world. Let's be an example and do better to end this cruelty. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Carla with the last four numbers, 3100. Please press star six to unmute yourself. State your name, item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling Hi. From. Hi. Hi, my name is Mandy Lindquist calling from Salinas, California. I'm commenting on item number three. I'm Go opposed ahead. to the rodeo ban. Hello? Go ahead. I'm opposed to the rodeo ban. I urge you to drop the poorly written ordinance, but if it does move forward, please amend the draft ordinance and use the language suggested by the Western Sports Industry Coalition. They've provided you and the committee with language that clarifies restrictions on equipment, removes unnecessary equipment bans, and removes blatantly untruthful language that says rodeo uses inhumane implements and more. There are no items placed on or in flank straps to harm bulls or horses. Spurs are dull. There are over 60 rules related to livestock safety and pro rodeo, and it behooves no one in the rodeo industry, particularly stock contractors who own the valuable animals, for the animals to be harmed. Animal rights extremists strive to end the use of animals for entertainment, industry, and sport. They capitalize on propaganda, misinformation, and emotions to further their cause. Please make your decisions based on facts, not feelings, and emotions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. This is the last speaker. Caller with the last four numbers, 2114. Please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name, the item you'd like to speak on, and the state you're calling from. Hello, my name is Janet Lemons. I'm a resident of California. I am calling in on item number three. I am an opposed to this um, ordinance. It's, uh, based, I'm hearing a lot of emotion here today on some very un untruths from definitely untruths. urge you to speak to the professional. Um, if you move forward with the ordinance, uh, look at the changes, the amendments that are being suggested from the uh, Western Sport coalition they make good changes it's fair to all and again i am opposed to your ordinance please follow the facts speak to the professionals who are in the industry and let's educate everyone so we can have a fair and balanced um, ordinance thank you thank you ma'am mr chair well thank you and we're going to close public comment and uh Thank you for everyone that participated and uh, everyone that was still in the queue. Sorry we couldn't get to uh, all of you. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier, uh, item number one has been continued. And uh, Mr. Clerk, could you read item number three? We're going to begin with, with that. Very good. Item three, city attorney report and ordinances relative to amending Los Angeles Municipal Code section 53.00 to add the definition for a quote rodeo unquote and adding LAMC section 53.39.2 to prohibit the use of harmful practices, techniques and devices at rodeos or rodeo related events. Thank you. And uh, first I'd like to thank uh, Council Member Blumenfield for joining us today for this very important item. And uh, as the author of this legislation, uh, would you like to make an opening statement? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. Thank you for inviting me here uh, today as we address something that is transformative, something historic in the city of Los Angeles. And, and I think it's a fitting uh, thing for your last committee hearing as chair of this this committee as it is a, is a big deal. I introduce this motion with your second, Mr. Chair, to stop the, the use of cruel and inhumane instruments on animals for entertainment purposes. Let me be clear, this is not banning rodeos. If we wanted to ban them, we would just do like the city of Pasadena did, or the city of Chino Hills, or the city of Irvine, and on and on. Uh, that is to say, this issue, uh, we're not we're not on the leading edge of this, but this is important as Los Angeles that we that we catch up and we show that we are the city of angels. Um, again, we're not banning the events altogether. What we're doing is banning instruments and practices that are inhumane. My goal is to address rodeo events such as bull riding, calf roping, and the other events defined by the rodeo ordinance. It is not to address equestrian or traditional horseback riding. It's actually modeled after the city of Pittsburgh's ordinance. And incidentally, they put this ordinance in place 30 years ago. Uh, so we're catching up with Pittsburgh in that sense. Uh, however, unlike them, we've, met, we've made it more narrow. We've defined rodeo. Uh, and I should say in their 30 years, nobody has complained about not being able to ride horses or, or any of these other activities people are fearing will somehow be affected. They've had this, this kind of ordinance, a broader ordinance for 30 years and, and have been doing just fine. When we talk about bronc riding, for example, that's different than horseback riding. And um, I'll have the city attorney up in a few moments to reiterate that as it's written in the ordinance. Another example, we're not banning the use of spurs. We're banning the use of them at the rodeo. Some argue, some argue that this is already a state law and there's some truth to that. However, the state law definition of rodeo uh, is much broader. It has to include uh, three events or more. A lot of these rodeo events are just two or one event. Uh, we as a city are allowed to be more expansive. We are abiding by state law, but we are applying this ordinance to mean that a rodeo is deemed so when it has just one of these activities. Now there's startling numbers out there, uh, and according to today's LA Times, the amount of uh, injuries and deaths at rodeos in California uh, and that's only in these under events, which have three of these activities. Otherwise, there would have been, you know, the, the other activities wouldn't, would have, the other activities are not even reported because they only had two. How many more animals have been injured or have died if you were to include those other events? Probably a lot more. And according to the front page articles in today's LA Times uh, that reports document injuries that range from, range from superficial abrasions, suffered as panicked animals rush out of their chutes, to crushed skulls, broken legs, gored flanks, snapped spine. Uh, it's kind of gruesome. Uh, and I'll quote the article. It says, in 35 of the injury reports reviewed by the Times, the animal died immediately or within minutes of the accident, or had to be euthanized, or in one case, slaughtered. In the following hours or days, in the 14 cases, the reports leave the fate of the severely injured animals unclear. And in these cases, either the attending veterinarian was denied access to the animal, or the report did not provide information on the animal's fate. So we know that the numbers are worse. And in fact, in 28 of the 35 deaths reviewed by the Times, the animal died while performing. 12 horses died in, in bron bronco riding events, rodeo performances in which a flank strap is cinched around the horse's waist to make them buck. Riders try to stay atop of the bucking horse for several seconds. One of these horses ran headfirst into a pole and died almost immediately. Another went full speed into a metal gate and broke its neck. Others had their legs break underneath them as they bucked. 
And there's some horrific video out there, uh, and I'm not recommending anybody look at it, but it's, it's out there on the internet. The language of the ordinance reflects the intent of the motion. There are a series of definitions that have been offered up by the equine committee, and I'd like to note that I spoke with the general manager of animal services department where the rules and regulations of rodeos are housed, and she has agreed to revise their rules and regulations to include these definitions so that we can reiterate what is allowed and what is not. As one veterinarian pointed out when she rode bareback bronx as a teenager, she drove the spurs into the shoulders of the horses. Spurs can cause Spurs cause trauma. 90 pounds of pressure from a hammer can drive a nail into a pine uh, two by four. So what can a, uh, a full grown adult do? The rodeo advocates say bulls are bred to buck. And if that were really the case, then why do they need these instruments of torture? They give you answers, but it's always something like it encourages the animal. Please. Regarding calf roping, which some veterinarians say is the worst of all rodeo events, cats are injured and some die. Dr. Robert Bay from Colorado autopsy rope, roping cats and found hemorrhages, torn muscles, torn ligaments, damage to the trachea, damage to the throat, damage to the thyroid. These calves never get a chance to heal before they're just used again. And these calves are still nursing, so they are literally babies. The damage they suffer to their necks is unacceptable. Meat inspectors who processed rodeo animals found broken bones, ruptured internal organs, massive amounts of blood in the abdomen, from ruptured blood vessels and damage to the parts that hold in the neck to the rest of the spinal column. I'm not gonna even get into the electric prods because that's so over the top, it's not even worth our time. Uh, according to a Yahoo Finance article published on November 14th of this year, 72% of Los Angeles residents support this ordinance. Furthermore, the poll showed strong support for the ordinance across all demographic groups, including 70% approval among Black respondents, 67% among Latino respondents. As Cesar Chavez said on December 26, 1990, Cesar Chavez said in a letter to Action for Animals, quote, racism, economic uh, deprival, dog fighting, cock fighting, bull fighting, and rodeos are cut from the same fabric, violence, unquote. Rodeos are inherently dangerous for humans and animals alike. The difference that animals are that the animals are never actually given a choice. Now, animals are survivors with inherent survival instincts, but they would never consent to be roped, wrestled, wrangled, hogtied, slammed to the ground. An uh, October 7th, 22 article from Hey SoCal said, quote, if this were done to a puppy or kitten, the offender would understandably be charged with a crime and likely be jailed. In rodeos, however, it's called calf rope, and the supporters claim it's a sport. Well, real sports have willing participants. Athletes who under the rule, understand the rules and accept the risks and benefits. These rodeo animals are not such athletes. They are sentient, gentle farm animals who must be provoked into acting wild. The reality is that they are terrified. Watch any standard rodeo video and you will see the fear in their eyes. As Dr. Peggy Larson stated, quote, animals and humans share the same pain and fear centers in the brain. The fear center is the amyg amygdala. The pain centers are the free, free frontal prefrontal cortex, uh, and hypothalamus. Animals feel pain and fear, fear just like human beings do. There are many ways to learn about Western culture and heritage. We have plenty here in Los Angeles. The Gene Autry Museum of Western Heritage is right here in Griffith Park. There are numerous sanctuaries in Southern California that up, offer up close and personal experiences with farm animals. These are the very same animals that are, be, that are being subjected to these rodeos. As some callers pointed out, Mexico City, Mexico City banned bullfighting indefinitely. Not, not for a cultural attack, but because they know bullfighting is cruel. Please see this ordinance for what it is, taking a long overdue stand against animal cruelty. And thank you, Mr. Chair, and I certainly ask for your honor. You're on mute, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Blumenfield, for uh, for your statement, and I think uh, your office has also provided us a video. Uh, Mr. Hirsch, uh, could you please uh, play this video for us?
thank you for oh shoot. Thank you for providing us with that. Um, I assume it had uh, audio, but I, I wouldn't torture the members of this committee to watch that uh, terrible scene a second time to get the audio. I think we uh, we got the message for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, Mr. Blumenfield, I'd like to ask you to lead off if you have any questions uh, for the city attorney or anyone else about this ordinance. Sure, and I know we, we it's, uh, I'll be brief. I have a couple of questions for the city attorney though. Uh, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there, misleading rhetoric as to what the ordinance applies to. So if you could please reiterate for us what it applies to based on, on the intent of the motion. Yes, so thank you, council members. So this draft ordinance would prohibit the use of um, harmful practices, techniques, and devices at rodeos. And um, as has been mentioned and as was requested by council, it's modeled after the city of Pittsburgh ordinance that bans the use of um, harmful implements at rodeos. The, um, the ordinance's prohibitions only apply to rodeos, and that is defined in the draft. Um, a rodeo is defined as an exhibition, a performance, or a competition that includes common rodeo events, such as bull riding and calf roping, and similar activities to those. Uh, these are activities that involve aggressive handling of, of animals. Uh, so if it qualifies as a rodeo under that definition, the prohibitions would apply, uh, but it would not extend beyond that. So horseback riding, horse jumping, none of that, right? No, so something like horseback riding, it, it wouldn't qualify because it's not an activity similar to those listed in the ordinance. It's not the type of aggressive handling uh, activity that, that we see in rodeos. And, and uh, the other thing is, tell us, there was talk about state law. Tell us how is this different than state law and, and permissible under state law? Sure. So there is a state law that <clears throat> imposes certain requirements on rodeos and uh, rodeo operators, and that is Penal Code Section 596.7. Um, we as a city, though, can impose additional requirements related to rodeos while still respecting the state law, and that's what this ordinance does. Um, the state law defines a rodeo as a performance or competition, including three or more uh, specific rodeo type events, and then imposes certain requirements for rodeos and rodeo operators that qualify under that state law definition. Um, for example, the presence of a veterinarian at, at the rodeo. But the state law doesn't uh, prohibit the use of specific devices except for the use of an electric prod under very limited circumstances um, once the animal is in the holding chute, um, and that's to protect uh, participants or spectators. Um, the state law will still apply the same way it does after the adoption of this ordinance, uh, except the city's ordinance would go further. Um, our ordinance, the prohibitions wouldn't be limited to performances involving three or more events, it could be just one, for example, you have a bull riding competition where only that one event occurs. Um, and our ordinance also goes further in um, prohibiting harmful implements that the state law does not, such as the flank and bucking straps and the sharpened or fixed spurs. Um, and then although the city council did actually ask for a pretty much a flat prohibition on the electric prods or shocking devices, our draft ordinance does allow for limited use of an electric prod, only where necessary to protect participants and spectators after the animal is in the holding chute. And that's, again, included because it respects the state law and, 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 and is intended so that um, we don't create any type of conflict with the state law. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Chair, that's, a, that's I'll turn it back to you. Mr. Thank Chair. You. Thank you. And I, I uh, well, first of all, let me see if, uh, Mr. Harris Dawson has any questions or comments? No. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes. There's a staffer from CD7 who'd like to make a statement. Oh, well, let's uh, let's do that then. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, committee members, Paula Basignana, staff to Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez. On behalf of Councilwoman Rodriguez, I would like to express her concerns with the ordinance before you here today. 
As this body considers new regulations for rodeos, it's important to understand the extent to which equestrian activities still present are still present and thriving in the city and its impact and the impact that this ordinance may have on the private lives of Angelinos. The truth of the matter is, driving through Silmar on any given weekend, you are bound to find a charreada or cabalgata taking place in a private home within the equestrian K-Zone district or a rodeo event hosted at a city equestrian facility such as the one we have in Lakeview Terrace. People move to Silmar specifically to live this lifestyle. Young charros and escaramuzas practice this to remain connected to their cultural roots. From Silmar to Compton and many pockets in between, the equestrian lifestyle is a tradition that has withstood the test of time and remains embedded in our metropolitan region, oftentimes providing a positive outlet for at-risk youth in our communities through various programs. Councilwoman Rodriguez is particularly concerned by the definition of rodeo in the draft ordinance as the language, quote, or other similar event activity, end quote, leaves a lot of room for confusion for both community members and um, the task enforcement agency. The charreadas and cavalgatas that frequently take place within our district and the various events it hosts doesn't quite fit into the box that we have drawn with this ordinance and therefore leads to concern about fairness as, in, in, as uh, in enforcement. Counter to some comments heard earlier, these concerns are not an accusation of racism, but rather highlighting that this is an issue of ordinance language that leaves the enforcer to make the judgment call on something they may not have the cultural competency to interpret. This or other clause result and resulting discretion in interpretation by the enforcer also differs from that of the California Penal Code cited earlier, uh, 5596.7, which this draft ordinance cites for other aspects of the proposed ordinance. We hope that this committee takes a nuanced look at this delicate phrasing to ensure that anything proposed can be easily followed by the diverse equestrian community and fairly enforced across the board. Our office will be submitting a letter to the record in this regard. Thank you for your time. Well, and uh, uh, I would would make a point first that um, while there are, are cultural preferences for other cruel activities like cockfighting, which admittedly is much more cruel than this particular activity, uh, it, it's clearly been decided that some activities are just too cruel um, to uh, to allow to continue just based on on the cultural preferences. But uh, Mr. Blumenfield, I, I assume you have heard uh, similar arguments and concerns and how have you uh, reacted to them in drafting this ordinance? Well, it's, it's the reason I had the city attorney speak before to make, make it clear that this does not impact uh, other equestrian activities that rodeo is, is defined and, and we're dealing with instruments of cruelty. We're not dealing with uh, you know, there's lots of events that people can have. I don't think it's going to stop all of the, the cultural events by any means, but you're dealing with a very narrow set of uh, cruel instruments that have been banned in many other cities and where ro entire rodeo has been banned in other cities. Uh, and we're, this is, this is pretty narrow casted in terms of what it, what it does ban. Uh, and it's, you know, you, you can have activities without having instruments of cruelty. And I, I know there's been some discussion and I'm not a thousand percent clear on, on what's limited to rodeos. I know there have been some concerns about the use of spurs and not inside actual competitive rodeos. Do we regulate spurs that are not in rodeos in any way? Cause some are sharper and more cruel. Some are, are, are not incredibly painful and could be used in in all kinds of equestrian events. How how have, has your ordinance handled that? Well, the city attorney can address it directly, but this this only deals with the the fixed spurs. It doesn't deal with you know. There's lots of spurs that are not prohibited here. Yeah, so um, the city attorney wants yeah. to address it more directly. Go ahead. Yeah, to add to that, so so yes, it doesn't ban all spurs. It, it bans sharpened or fixed spurs or rowels. But um, in terms of, of spurs used in other uh, contexts outside of rodeo, um, you know, there could be future regulations or ordinances, rules adopted for those. But this particular ordinance ordinance is address addresses rodeos, um, um, not other contexts. And the use of those specific types of spurs and rowels in rodeos. 
Okay, so people that have called me to express concerns uh, about their private use of spurs and and other things in in uh, competitive equestrian events, etc. Um, this doesn't actually directly relate to them and doesn't regulate it. Mr. Yeah, so I it it depends on. Um what event you're talking about, but as I explained before, this addresses rodeo type events, not like a private horse riding or, or, or typical equestrian type of, of, of um, activities. Uh, there's a list of specific types in the ordinance that are very specific to rodeos. And, and uh, Mr. Blumenfield, we, we never spoke about this, but uh, uh, a number of people have, have called and, and uh, suggested that we just ban rodeos entirely. So I don't know if it was if it was easier or harder to do this or just to do an outright ban. I don't know what what kind of feedback you got and how you arrived at, at this approach. Well, as, as you know, we worked with a number of uh, animal welfare organizations and a lot of folks. And this is, is sort of the, the narrow casted way to do it, to go after the actual instruments of torture rather than just banning a specific event. And, and we've done this in the past. I did it with the, the ban on, on the circus elephants. We didn't ban circuses uh, from entering the city of Los Angeles. We just banned the, uh, the implement uh, of, of pain infliction on, uh, on elephants. And that had you know, largely the same, the same effect. Uh, uh, and, and with with both of those things, you know, people can be creative and come up with ways to do rodeo or do circuses that are in ways that are not cruel and inhumane. Uh, and and ideally, by banning the instruments of torture, you're you're saying we're not closing the door to to uh, you know animal activity, but it has to be done in a humane way, or to, you know, to entertainment activity, but it has to be done in a humane way. So that's why this is more narrow casted than that. But you're right, some cities. A number of cities have chosen just to outright ban rodeos, but this is a more measured approach and and really more going after what is the uh, the animal welfare issue here, which is the cruelty. And I know in some cities, those weren't cities that necessarily all had rodeos. In some way, some of them, you know, intended it to be a a symbolic step against cruelty, but clearly. Los Angeles could and does uh, occasionally have rodeos. So this is a real thing. Um, I, I think we've heard from a lot of folks that calf roping is, is uh, perhaps the most cruel of all the events in rodeos. Does this eliminate, eliminate calf roping? How does it address it? So the attorney to answer? Sure. So it, um, Again, the, the ordinance is geared toward the use of uh, the prohibit, prohibited use of certain techniques, practices, and uh, devices. So it doesn't um, prohibit the activity per se. It 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 prohibits the use of uh, the harmful uh, devices. So what does it prohibit in terms of calf roping? How do we make it less likely that calves are are significantly hurt as they they sometimes are? Yeah, so um, one of the prohibited devices is a lasso or lariat, and I, f I believe that that would um, address the concern of calf roping, although I always hesitate to speak um, not as a, you know, I admit I'm not an expert in these um, activities, but that, that would be my understanding. Okay, well, I, I, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Blumenfield, you have made a compelling case, as have uh, many of the speakers today and others that we've we've spoken with, um, and so I I would uh, join the folks that are concerned. I think uh, the number of uh, animals that are injured every year, while it's a modest percentage, is an unacceptable number, and we know that it is significantly underreported as well. Um, so. Uh, I would ask uh, for an I vote, and uh, certainly I am in strong support of this action. Mr. Clerk, could we have a roll call vote? Uh, yes, uh, Councilmember Koretz? 
Aye. Councilmember Harris Dawson. Yes. Very well. This matter is approved. That item passes. Uh, item number two. Item two, CAO report relative to updating the city's policies regarding military leave and compensation to extend the existing provisions to city employees for inactive duty training. And uh, if we have, uh, I believe we have a staff member from CD15, uh, uh, Dennis Gleason, if you are here and would like to make a statement, uh, uh, this is your opportunity. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Dennis Gleason from the Office of Councilmember Joe Buscaino. First, this will be my final time addressing a council committee representing Councilman Buscaino, and I just wanna say what a privilege and honor it is and how fitting it is to be here at your final PAW committee meeting, Mr. Chair, as you've been my elected representative either in the state assembly or as my city council member for most of the 19 years I have lived here. And I just wanna express my personal gratitude for all you've done for CD5, as well as the city at large during your time in, in public office. And my thanks for all your good work as well. And it's my honor to have you at your last committee meeting here. As well. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. A little over a year ago, Larry Vasquez, uh, Director of Military and Veterans Affairs for Mayor Garcetti, reached out to our, our office and asked if we could collaborate on solving a problem. City employees who serve in the National Guard or as reservists in the armed forces are being forced to either use their vacation time or take unpaid leave in order to complete training that is a mandatory requirement of their participation in the reserves. Though I have never served in uniform, my sister, my brother-in-law, and my father all tell me that this training is no vacation and that asking our city employees to use that hard-earned time on training or go unpaid is simply unreasonable and unfair. Now, the City Council has consistently demonstrated its support to those that serve in uniform by ensuring continuity of benefits and making up any difference in salary when reservists are called up to active duty for longer than 30 days. And voters of the city have demonstrated their support by adopting a city charter that provides a 5% hiring credit for veterans who have served during times of armed com combat or who have sustained injuries as a result of their service. We thank the CAO for their report and for responding to two out of the three requests made by the council, the feasibility of removing the 30-day cap on unpaid leave for training and the feasibility of providing compensated leave for training. However, we are disappointed the CAO did not perform the financial analysis as additionally requested by the council and believe at least a rough analysis could have been conducted by means of a survey, by reviewing payroll records to determine the number of employees that have utilized the existing uncompensated leave provision, or by extrapolating data from LAPD, which has an existing military liaison and keeps records on the number of officers who are reservists. While we certainly would like to have had a financial analysis, we believe providing compensated leave for required training is the right thing to do and respectfully request this committee request an ordinance from the city attorney to provide two weeks of compensated leave for inactive duty military training. It won't account for all required training, but it's a good start and a good show of faith toward our city employees who serve our country in uniform. Now, I conducted my own financial analysis to determine the fiscal impact of providing two weeks of paid leave by utilizing a February 13th, 2007 CAO report contained in council file 06-2588, which indicated 327 city employees were called up to active duty in 2006, which is the most recent year I could find information for. Multiplying 327 by 80 hours and then multiplying by the current $96 average hourly overtime rate for a P3 officer, the fiscal impact would be about $2.5 million a year. Now I'd like to thank David Hirsch on your staff for his assistance with this and I'd also like to express my gratitude for your current and, and former staff members of your team that I've had the pleasure of working with over the years, Joan, Andy, James, Justin, and Jeff. And uh, once again, really appreciate you taking up this matter today on your last committee meeting. Thank you, I'm happy to answer any questions along with uh, Larry Vasquez, Director of Military and Veterans Affairs for Mayor, Mayor Garcetti, 
and Officer Ryan White, military liaison with LAPD, who are also here and can answer questions as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I have a few. So just to clarify, the twice monthly weekend training exercises um, uh, cited in the first paragraph on page two of your report, the two week annual training you mentioned in the same paragraph, um, are those both mandatory? If that was for me, yes, those are those are both mandatory required trainings to maintain your status as a reservist or a guard group. So is it accurate the city employees have to either use vacation time or go without pay for both their mandatory weekend drills and their mandatory two week annual training? Well, for their two week annual training, they typically would go, they would be activated for that period of time. They are not activated for uh, routine weekend drills. Uh, so there is a differentiation there. So would this apply to both those things or not? This would really address the weekend drills that are um, inactive uh, duty training. Okay, although obviously they're, they're uh, sacrificing time in both those situations. Um, sure. Regarding the fiscal analysis the council requested, um, how do we how do we do that? Does the city maintain records of when employees have been given uncompensated leave for training, um, as described in your report? So I've been working with the personnel department to understand some of the uh, codes that are used, uh, and they are still uh, working on uh, getting some of those numbers to me for the last couple of years. So. Does the city maintain records of when reservists are called to full active duty? Um, do individual departments maintain records about the number of reservists and past participation in inactive duty training? How's, how's this work? Yeah, my research into this area shows that individual departments are um, uh, dealing with their personnel that are called to this training. I am not aware that the personnel department is tracking this, except for codes that are inputted for unpaid or paid military leave. Does LAPD track this for their members? So uh, I'll let Ryan uh, White speak to that, but I will tell you that this should be the model for the city moving forward because they do an outstanding job and I'll turn it over to Ryan. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, yeah, th thank you for hearing this, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, we have approximately 250 LAPD employees concurrently serving in the Guard and Reserve. And uh, fortunately, I have the honor of being kind of the department's li liaison for them. So I certainly have records of when they go on military leave and when they request to uh, go on paid military leave or unpaid military leave which is generally the case for uh, weekend drills or what the military coins in active duty training. And, and what are you finding typically year to year in yeah. LAPD? Yes, sir. Well, um, you know, the California Veterans Code mandates that uh, we give all our city employees under most circumstances 30 days of paid military leave per year. But the caveat to that is, is that unfortunately, the way the city admin code is written, that does not apply to inactive duty training, commonly associated with weekend drills or what the Army coins battle assemblies. So as a result, as uh, both Mr. Gleason and Mr. Vasquez indicated, our employees are generally forced to rely on their regular days off, vacation time or cop time to do those weekend drills where um, the California Veterans Code actually gives us the freedom as a municipality to also extend that to weekend drills or inactive duty training. But unfortunately, the way the admin code's written right now, that is not the case. Well, we don't have exact numbers. I think we have a pretty good idea and I appreciate the 
the effort by uh, CD15 to give us uh, a, a ballpark idea. Um, from my point of view, it doesn't matter ex the exact dollars because this is just something that's the right thing to do. And whatever it costs, and we know, we know within a reasonable ballpark what that is, um, I think we should just be willing to do it because it's the right thing to do. Um, uh, unless we have any other questions, I'm going to ask that uh, we uh, we receive and file the CAO's report dated November 10th, 2022, and request the city attorney to prepare and present an ordinance providing two weeks of annual paid leave for inactive duty military training. If we could have a roll call on this item. Yes, Council Member Koretz. Aye. Council Member Harris Dawson. Yes. That item passes. Very good. And is there anything left on the desk? No, that clears the desk. Well, this, is, uh, this has been a pleasure working with everybody on staff. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Harris Dawson, uh, past and present other colleagues that have served on this committee in various incarnations. And uh, it's been an honor and a great pleasure for me. And uh, having said that, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, sir.